Hi everyone and welcome. What you see here is a glass table that's out here in my garden. And it doesn't get a whole lot of use these days. It just kind of sits out here <laughs> collecting dust. And um, recently I've been maintaining a couple bins with worms in them. And this just seemed to me like a perfect cover to keep the rain from falling on them. Like it did last night. This tabletop is pretty wet because it rained all last night. So what I've got in these containers is, to a large degree, the stuff that came out of my outdoor composting bag, or my outdoor worm bag to be more specific, because I do have an outdoor composting barrel, but then I have an outdoor worm bag as well. And the outdoor worm bag was recently relaunched, but I wanted to uh, enlist the population from that bag to relaunch red wigglers in my wormery downstairs since I recently lost a whole bunch of my red wigglers I thought that turning to my outdoor worm bag would be a great place to collect a whole bunch of red wigglers together to be moved downstairs into my wormery and this green tub here is where I've got those worms that I collected sort of uh, in a quarantine situation right now I'd like to sort of get to a point where I feel comfortable that I'm not dragging a whole bunch of things inside other than worms such as insects and stuff like that. So for a while now this has been out here and I want to let it sit out here for a little while longer. But I don't want to neglect it so I've been checking in on it regularly. It was a week ago that we came out here last and we, uh, we placed some food in here for these little guys but we also placed some food down into this container too. This container also includes the castings as well as the cocoons that came out of the outdoor worm bag. And the whole idea with this was to let the, um, the material sit for a long enough period of time that the cocoons would start hatching and that baby worms would start coming out. And I did notice that when I played the video back really quick from when we start looking through this material last week, I would till up some of the material and I play the video back really quickly, I can see movement all over the place. So I can see tons and tons of little baby worms cruising around in this material already. So I got a feeling that this is definitely doing a trick as far as what it was meant to do. So over here, last but not least, I've got a somewhat unique situation going on over here. I, um, I had a whole bunch of worm bins in the basement, red wigglers. <laughs> once, once again, back to red wigglers. But the, the bins that all crashed and burned and in which I lost all my red wigglers had a, a bunch of really nasty castings that I kept dragging outside every time the bin seemed to crash and burn. And then at some point I decided I was going to just combine all those castings into one tub and give that collection of castings some time just in case there were cocoons in there. And who knows, maybe even some surviving worms that I would try to recoup my original Red Wiggler worm population with. And even though it's not many, we have been noticing that there's been a collection of worms coming together in this one. And at some point I'm going to relaunch my uh, original Red Wiggler population, even if it's with a tiny, tiny sample of that original population. Keep them se separate, try to grow that group up, and always treat them as my original Red Wigglers, separate from the rest. So now, after a week of be having been out here, since I last checked in on them, I wanted to make sure that they've got what they need as far as food and everything else. So I'm going to get these up on the bench really quick and uh, take a look at what's going on probably feed them if they need it and whatever else is required so let's get to work so today we're going to uh, start in the container that has the I don't even know I think somebody might have suggested that the Phoenix <laughs> population might be a good way to refer to this group since it is kind of um, a group of worms that's in a way being revived from the dead <laughs> I would pretty much written off all my red wigglers that I used to originally have as gone. So I was a little bit uh, surprised, pleasantly surprised, when I started picking through this material and noticing survivors. But right here, I guess, would be an example of what I'm trying to avoid. I, I really have no way of knowing what kind of a creature this is. I mean, in one way, it looks a little bit like it could be the larva of a black soldier fly, but certain things about its appearance tell me that it's not. So it, it's exactly those sort of things that I'd really prefer to um, not drag down into my wormery. So 
this is just sort of par for the course I guess if you're going to be running stuff outdoors there's going to be the opportunity for opportunists to come come along and try to take advantage of what you've got going on so that's really the one thing about this whole concept that concerns me is somehow ensuring that I'm not shooting myself in the foot by br bringing all kinds of weird things down into my wormery because my wormery is in my basement and if I were to suddenly have a you know whole bunch of flies or whatever those insect larvae were emerging out of my worm bins and starting to overrun the basement I would be a little bit disappointed in myself for letting that happen so I'm going at I'm going at this in a very cautious methodical way so I'm certainly not in a hurry to get this done but at some point I really would like to kind of treat everything that's on this side as you know I don't know if I would want to treat these as finished castings per se because they're definitely not the most elegant looking castings you would ever see they were just the remains of all that clumpy nasty material that the worms used to live in before the systems all started crashing and burning it's more of the stuff over on this side that I'm interested in where the uh, hopefully the worms are I guess at this point it is little reason to think that they would have moved back over into the other end of the bin because this stuff is so dry I have gone probing through this stuff and I've seen how dry this stuff is so it would be totally um, inhospitable for worms to live in it's this end of the bin that I've been trying to maintain the moisture level in by keeping it covered with that plastic that you saw earlier so this is refreshing because last time we kind of looked and looked and looked and saw hardly any worms and right here with one scoop I'm already seeing one two three four five little wormies hanging out down here which is kind of cool as well as a good amount of moisture to keep them content so I mean I hate to think that I'd be trying to revive a worm popular uh, worm population with just six worms so my hope is that there's more worms in here than just those six Let's take a look at what else we can see in here. Oh, did I just see a cocoon? That would be kind of cool if it was cocoons in here too. Let's see what else we can see in here. I'm gonna dig around a little bit more. But that was kind of cool, that first little encounter. Here's another worm hanging out. Let's try not to count the same worm more than once. So that was six or so, right? Roughly speaking. Definitely not an abundance of worms, but at least a few. And if I'm actually seeing cocoons, that's also a good sign. So I've, you know, I've, I've gone at this from a very realist pers realistic perspective, acknowledging the fact that we're probably dealing with an extremely small number of worms here. Now I thought I saw some leftover bits and pieces of maybe some of the food they got last time. All right, now I'm remembering. Just from the look of it, I could tell what it was. These were uh, the peels of potato that they got last time. I think that's what I added to all these systems last time and I don't even remember how many I gave them it might have been a handful or so you wouldn't think that much is needed for a pretty small population of worms but it does seem like um, it is getting nibbled away whether it's being nibbled away by the worms themselves or if it's just the bacteria and the microbes fungus whatever in the bin that's working on the material along with the worms it is seemingly diminishing in quantity so I don't know I'm just thinking do we add food do we leave it be do I maybe try to give them a little shot of fresh bedding to hang out in I've got some grass people have been suggesting the use of grass and I actually put some grass into that little green tub that we're gonna check coming up and it did seem like the worms were definitely enjoying it, so my thought was to maybe um, enhance the bedding in here by maybe pushing all of this stuff inboard a bit and throwing in some fresh grass over there, which might take a little time to hydrate and get damp and comfortable that the worms would want to move into it. But as far as food is concerned, you know, if they haven't eaten all these potato peel scraps yet, not to mention the fact that all the material in here is sort of worm food too, all these leaves that were used to construct this area as well as the grass itself that I'm gonna plop in here 
I don't think it's necessary to add food. But maybe the other two systems that we're going to mess around with do need food. But I'm going to hold off on bringing anything out here until I actually encounter a situation where I believe it is needed. So I'm going to go grab a handful or two of some grass that we could shove in here. And then we'll, uh, then we'll put this away and move on. Alright, so I can't remember if it was yesterday or the day before that I cut grass. It might have been yesterday. So I, uh... I've allowed this stuff to sort of sit out here. I just drop all the stuff, the cuttings that get bagged up into my mower. I drop it right into my garden as mulch and sort of line the, uh, the surface of the earth. A sort of a weed barrier. Also a sort of like a, a walkway, if you will. So I don't step in dirt when I go out to check on my plants in my garden. So I've got a whole bunch of fairly freshly cut grass. You can see some of it starting to dry and turn um, brown. But the stuff is fairly fresh, so I would expect that it might heat up a little bit as it begins to decompose here. So I don't think it's going to become a, a scary, dangerous situation for the worms. If it does heat up a little bit, I believe the worms still have plenty of space that they can retreat into to get away from it until such a time that the material becomes habitable that they can move in. But I've been wanting to kind of expand the bedding that's in this system so that the worms can continue to um, have fresh space to roam in. And you know, if you think about it, this is all gonna not serve as only bedding, but certainly as food as well. So let's start bringing some of these covering materials. I don't know, I had just cut some weeds at some point when I was initially starting to set this system up and I used all those cut weeds as sort of a top covering. That's what all these sticks are. You can still see some of the leaves that made up those weeds but it's almost been reduced down to sticks anymore. Kind of a weird top covering. I'm wondering if I should just do away with it at some point. Maybe I should. It's kind of awkward. Yeah, you know, I want to get rid of it and Let's just resort to using some of these um, scraps of cardboard that remain still. They're pretty tattered as well. But these will sort of turn into the, the new top coverings. And I did bring a piece of newspaper out here that we can use as well. So why don't we put that to use too. Here we go. My mom gave me a bunch of spoiled cucumbers the other day that she wanted to contribute to the worm farm and she had wrapped them all up in newspaper and this is I believe some of the leftover material from that contribution yeah you can see this stuff over here on this side of the bin it's really dry you wouldn't expect to find worms down in here even if you go to the very bottom you're finding extremely dry material that the worms would have no chance in I guess the only reason I'm kind of keeping it around is to sort of block in this side of the material on the uh, on the portion of the bin where we do expect there to be some worms. And I don't even know how many at this point. Hopefully a few dozen. Even though we, we only observed a, a few, perhaps 10 or so, my hope is that there's a significantly larger number than that in here. So let's move on. But, uh, I don't know how much longer we're going to keep it going this way. Perhaps a little while longer. Let's move on to the, uh, the stuff that came out of the outdoor worm bag. So now, as time goes on, I have to treat this as less and less as a container full of castings and more as a nursery bin because that's really what it was put aside to be. The castings were interesting, but what was more interesting was the potential of there being a whole bunch of worm cocoons in the material and I believe that that theory has already been proven true because almost any time you look around in this material you find um, baby worms as well as other things I could see a, a centipede but then again a centipede is something you don't want to have around your worm so let's get rid of that guy however this little guy over here is a pill bug or um, I guess isopod those are worm those are worm bin helpers that I consider as welcome guests. And um, I guess right here is something we can already see as one of the reasons I'm quarantining stuff outside is the 
the fact that I do believe that, um, you know, insects are laying their eggs or have already laid their eggs in some of the material that I'm playing around with out here. And this, for example, would be one that I know that I can identify. It's the larva of a black soldier fly. I guess I've grown accustomed to being able to identify these when I see them. And it's this sort of stuff that I really don't want to be dragging down into my basement. And that's the reason I'm quarantining the little green tub. Because, you know, you saw there was a couple little creatures. Um, I'm going to throw this little guy off to the side. I usually, uh, I usually don't do that when it comes to black soldier flies. I treat them as welcome guests in most of my systems. But here, um, I wouldn't mind seeing fewer and fewer insects. Except ones that I don't mind, like the isopods, the roly-polies. Here, I'm just kind of um, giving the system time, giving all the cocoons time to hatch, giving all those baby worms time to grow to a decent size so that I can maybe try uh, rounding them up at some point in the future, which I haven't even started trying to do yet. I guess as I start getting down into this middle area, I'm already bumping into what appears to be some of the leftovers of the last feeding. This is more of the same, I believe, or is this something else? Yeah, no, these are the these are the skin of the potato peels that we fed with last time. Same as we saw in the other container. So I believe as we rummage around in this spot where the food has been added on a few occasions now, that's where we might expect to see a few worms. And it's usually this footage that we're watching now that I'll try to play back more quickly on my computer when I get into the editing software to see what I can see because the worms are easy to see when the video is played back quickly because they're all moving around and almost everywhere you look you could see stuff moving around and obviously the larger worms are quite evident but sometimes you can see little tiny things moving and those are the ones that I'm worried about leaving behind the little baby worms and to me it seems like giving them time to grow to a decent size so that they kind of get moving around within the bin and then trying to set up a, a baiting area to gather them all into seems like the best bet because you know a little baby tiny worm that just emerged from its cocoon might be just looking you know within its own vicinity for things to nibble on but I would think as a worm begins to grow bigger and its appetite starts to increase, that's when it might be interested in trying to find a more substantial food source. And that's when a baiting area might be um, a little bit more successful in rounding up the worms. Looks like I leaned into some castings here and got my forearm a bit dirty, but I think this is, you know, good evidence that this material has got a good number of worms in it. You would probably have to agree with me if uh, if you were skeptical in the past about what I'm doing here. You gotta you gotta agree that this is definitely worth the effort to put these finished castings aside and give them a little bit of time so that the potential of additional worms can be realized. And the ones I don't know when I keep seeing a good sized worm like that little guy right there on the top. It almost makes me wonder if this little guy was just one of the ones that might have snuck through the screening process when I was screening the material that came out of the worm bag. You can see right here next to this more mature worm is a little itsy bitsy tiny one that probably only got hatched a week or two ago. It's still pretty small. So it does seem like giving this system a little bit more time before I try rounding up the worms um, makes good sense. And I have been adding food periodically to this system. But I do also want to get the worms in here to the point where they're motivated to get rounded up when I decide it's time to try rounding them up. So maybe I'll just leave them to nibble away at what remains of these potato peels if they should so wish to do or wish to do so. <laughs> but not add any fresh food because besides those bits there's also all kinds of other things 
scattered throughout this material, as you could probably imagine, that's also totally um, viable worm food. Not to mention the fact that worms can also re-eat their castings many, many times and still extract good nutrition from that stuff before the stuff is depleted of nutritional value. So I'm starting to think that not feeding these guys is probably a good idea so that at some point in the near future I can set up a, a spot in the bin intended to round them up, lure them over with some delicious food and fresh bedding. And then, uh, and then I think that that process will be pretty successful because we will have um, allowed the worms some time to sort of build up a, an appetite for some nice fresh food. I'm always interested in hearing people's thoughts about the things that I'm doing, so I'm curious to see if people agree with that approach, or am, am I missing a, an opportunity to do something more efficiently here? And the plastic covering that's been on this system is also seeming to do a really nice job on keeping the moisture level in this material almost perfect. I worried with some of the more damp foods that I placed in here that it might make the material a little bit muddy or something, but I don't think that those concerns were even really very valid at all. I think the worms just came by and nibbled away all those food items and very little moisture um, came out of those things. Because the material is just really, really nice. All right, onto the other container where we've actually got some worms hanging out i mean yeah we got definitely got worms hanging out in here you gotta admit that's for sure and pretty soon i think we'll be rounding them up and reuniting them with the rest of their family that we're going to check in next and then um and then these castings will be such that we could utilize them out in the garden oh man i keep leaning into this material <laughs> getting filthy all right let's move on to the little bin that's got the worms in it okay i've lowered the height of the camera a little bit since this is a much smaller container just so we can get a much more detailed and up close view of the contents of this bin the little white specks you see here on the top are sort of a, a late breaking um, idea that i had last time we checked in here was that i had bought a uh, pulverized eggshell out here and i wanted to give the bin grit but i almost forgot so i just ended up sprinkling it across the top I wondered if they would come up and take it all, but there's still leftovers here. I wonder if the reason they're not coming up for it is because um, maybe they just don't need it. Maybe there's plenty of gritty materials in the bin already. I just don't remember now if I've already added some or, or what the deal is. I do remember one of the bins that we added potato peels to last week sort of didn't get very many. I wonder if it might have actually been this one, the one that actually has the greatest number of worms in it. I could see this bin maybe using some more food. So I've got a feeling that even if there were a greater number of potato peels placed in here, chances are the worms have probably done away with it at this point. Here and there I'm feeling like little blotches of much more squirmy material. <laughs> Look at all these worms hanging out. It's not a very large bin. So it's not surprising that uh, an estimated population of a thousand worms is going to be kind of huddled together in certain spots where there's maybe um, more cozy space. This is weird. <laughs> this is our cork. But it almost seems like this worm has managed to find the spot where the corkscrew had gone into the cork to pull it out of the bottle and he's exploring it digging his little head down into the hole maybe this cork is finally turning into something that the worms can nibble away at and eat unless he's just a curious sort of worm and going in there to satisfy his curiosity but that's just one of the weird funny things that I keep in my bin sometimes and we check in on regularly and in this case, the cork has been actually moving around from bin to bin and somehow it ended up in the outdoor worm container. And 
now we get to check in on it when we bump into it. It does seem to me like putting grass in here was a pretty good idea. The worms do seem to enjoy it. And I thought that maybe if nothing else, we could, you know, enhance their environment a little bit by adding more grass. And I did actually, um, even after we added some to the, the other bin, I'm left with a great deal more that we could use in this system. And I wouldn't want to put it in in such a way that we're going to create a, a potential for things heating up and becoming dangerous for the little wormies, right? But I still like to add a good amount of it. This has got to all be leftovers from the potato peels. Maybe the, uh, the meaty portion of what remains on the potato peel is something that they're able to nibble off pretty quickly, but the peel itself is maybe a little bit more rough and not so easy for them to dig into quite yet. So they'll, they'll eat it all in time. But they'll, uh, you know, they'll focus on what they can eat today and say what they can't eat right away for tomorrow. But I would definitely have to say that we've probably estimated the number of worms pretty much correctly. I, I would have to guess that there probably are, in fact, about a thousand worms hanging out in here. And, you know, if I add more grassy materials into this bin, I, uh, I could almost treat that as a feeding, if you think about it, which would prevent me from needing to run inside and get more food for them. But, you know, why don't we take some of this older grass Chuck it down into the bottom as sort of a foundation and we'll go ahead and we'll grab them some fresh food from inside. Even though they've left some leftover potato peels here from the last time they got food. And we'll treat them to a nice little fresh dose of something to eat. And then we'll enhance their bedding by throwing in some fresh leaves at the end. And I'm even wondering if I pile it on pretty thick on the very top surface, will it still be um, safe for the worms? Will they be able to retreat down into the existing material here to get away from it if it does heat up? And even if I put, I don't know, maybe put an inch on, how much can it heat up? I don't think there's too much risk here. So, all right, I'm going to run inside and get some food for these little guys. I'll be right back. So I once again put this piece of paper to work to handle food. And coincidentally, it's food that my mom is the beneficiary of beneficiary or benefactor <laughs> the provider she's the one that provided this food once again and you might be able to recognize some of it they're radishes pretty good sized radishes and they were provided to me whole but i took the time before freezing them to cut them in half to increase their surface area a bit but they were already pretty mushy you know radishes typically are pretty uh tough root vegetables but these were already pretty mushy, so they were definitely beyond the point of uh, use, I believe. They were pretty nasty. And um, you know what? I'm thinking as long as I've got this paper out here, why don't we start providing them with a little extra paper-based bedding as well. I've, um, I've got plans to go away this weekend, and then I've got a little... Uh, little getaway trying to extend the weekend that follows that planned as well finally getting the RV that you sometimes see in the background when I show my garden gonna get the RV out and take that camping for a few days so I'm really looking forward to that but I'm sort of thinking ahead now in terms of when I'll have an opportunity next to deal with some of my bins so I'm trying to plan accordingly and I think that in the case of this bin by adding all this food that we just plopped in here as well as all this bedding that we're going to be giving them too. This system should be in pretty good shape, even if we don't manage to return to it for maybe another week or two. And that might be the case. I might not be able to get back to this one for another couple weeks. So I'm kind of glad that we're giving them a nice abundant amount of food here. So now I'm just going to use some of this older stuff to cover up the feeding with. And then I'm going to bring in a lot of that fresh grass that I pulled out of the out of the garden and then we're gonna put that in pretty generously across the top 
I don't, I don't know if it's a biomass or whatever the right expression is. I think you do need a fairly good amount of that stuff piled on thick to, uh, to heat up significantly enough that it would cause a perilous situation for the worms. So I don't think that we are in that sort of a um, situation here. I mean, I do trust that it will start to warm up a little bit as, it, as the microbes start to break it down and it starts to decompose. But hopefully the system is deep enough that the worms can simply retreat down deeper and get away from um, the material if it does become a little bit too warm for them. So, I mean, what I've collected here is definitely way more than I had in mind for plopping in here. Maybe I'll give them about half of what remains here and the rest will just go right back out into the garden. And this too, I think will um, end up becoming nice and dry. It'll dry out, but it'll, you know, as it does, it'll share some of its moisture with the bin. So this, this material in this bin has definitely got a good moisture level. I definitely don't have to worry about it. I had at some point um, taken away the plastic coverings. I thought that I thought that I had started out with plastic coverings in here, but then I um, figured I would go to just paper coverings and cardboard coverings to make sure that there's ample airflow in this system. Um, but, you know, there's certainly um, no concern about the material in here drying out because it's come nowhere close to becoming dry. As a matter of fact, I would almost say it's maybe even a little bit too damp. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to take care of today out here in my garden. And I do believe that all these systems are probably in pretty good shape at this point to sit out here for another couple weeks should I um, find it, you know, not possible to return to them to check in on them. But at some point soon, I think we'll be able to, you know, maybe consider finding a, a new home for these little guys down in my basement and um and i think that as far as the castings or at least the baby um, worm nursery goes we'll probably be able to set up a, a spot in the bin where we could try to you know draw the worms together so we could try to collect them and reunite them with the worms that live in here and then um and then that last system that's got that very few worms in it that too i think at some point might be ready to be uh set up in a nice little bin, probably a small bin. I was actually thinking about using this container once we finish taking care of the worms that occupy it um, and clean it out and get it set up. A small container like this would probably be sufficient for a small population like what we saw in that first container. So that's it for today, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.